Can we talk about House of the Dragon, please? Cool. House of the Dragon is fucking phenomenal. I'm not going to spoil too much, but House of the Dragon Season 2 is phenomenal. Some of the character development, some of the writing, some of the acting, wow. It's almost restored my faith in that whole Game of Thrones universe thing. But it's also reminded me just how disappointing it was how Game of Thrones ended. Those last four seasons, like, they were so bad. And I think all of us can agree. Those last four seasons were so bad, they ruined the top-tier, high-caliber first four seasons. That's how bad they were. So much so that I think a lot of people, myself included, I've never gone back to rewatch those seasons, even the good ones. That's how bad those last four ones. They kind of tainted such a good show that it's hard to go back and watch it because you know what you're going to get going forward. It's almost like Prison Break. Prison Break season one was so elite, it's hard to rewatch it because you know how terrible season two was in comparison. But wow, House of the Dragon is incredible. One of my favorite scenes is the, I think, is episode two or episode one where Otto Hightower has an argument with Aegon. I'll just leave it at that. And he's frustrated. And it's really cool because in this scene, you can see that he's exasperated, like he's fed up of playing the, you know, the house of cards. He's play, fed up of playing the, the game of whispers and manipulation in the background. He's clearly seeing that there's a limit to that stuff when people's emotions get involved. He's clearly seeing once the horse has been bolted, it's over. I can't control anything more. Everything's going to be what it's going to be. And it's just letting all that frustration out against with Aegon in this conversation. And it's an incredible scene. It really flipping is incredible. He's exasperated. He's annoyed. He's frustrated. He's angry. And Aegon is also angry and upset that Otto Aitara doesn't get what he's talking about. It's an incredible fucking scene. Really fucking poignant. But one of my favorite scenes, one of my favorite scenes is from the recent episode that features Rhaenyris, Rhaenyra or Renega, however you say her name, and Alison. And it's an amazing scene because it was quite hard to watch at times because there was a part in it where they basically talk about, essentially, for lack of a, you know, not to spoil, but they basically talk about how sometimes it's too late to turn back. It's just too late. Sometimes when things go one way, you just have to deal with the consequences. And I think I've kind of come to that realization myself in my adult age, where sometimes my actions, no matter how well intended, will have consequences. And you have to deal with those consequences one way or another. No amount of apologies, no amount of clarifications, no amount of explanations are ever going to make it okay. It's already done. And sometimes, sometimes... The really annoying thing is that sometimes you can get to a point in life where you fall out with somebody. You fall out with somebody and so much time passes in between. So much drama happens. It feels real, but you forgot the reason why you guys don't talk anymore. You actually don't remember. And it reminded me a lot of my recent, you know, troubling situation where a close former friend of mine passed away. And it was really sad because we hadn't spoken for a while prior to this person passing away. And I remember feeling a bit of a fraud for even posting about the person. That's probably maybe part of the reason why I didn't go to the funeral, even though I regret not going. But I just felt like a bit of a fraud because we never really spoke. We clearly fell out, but I don't remember why we fell out. You know, I don't remember exactly the reason why. But at one point, we were very close. That's why when I was looking for the pictures of the stuff to post as a tribute, I was like, wow. I forgot how close we actually were. Like, that was actually one of my very, very close friends. And it just all kind of fell apart. But then you forget. You forget. You forget. You forget, really, why you don't talk anymore. And sometimes you think to yourself, rah, man, life is so short, and it really isn't necessary. And it almost makes you think about, this is another side thing, honestly, right? But I remember I was watching this stream, and it had the, I think it was on No Jumper or something. And there was a guy on there. No, it wasn't No Jumper. It was back on Fig, I think. Was it No Jumper? Whatever it was. It was some show in that universe of people. And there was a guy on there that had beef with um, WAC 100. And he, he happened to like have some beef with WAC 100. The host of the show, I think it might have been Community. That's it. I think it might have been Community with AD and Pun. 
an ace boy pun. So there's a guy on there they're interviewing. He has some beef with Wack 100. Um, AD and Pun decide for good podcasts and content, let's call Wack 100 on the phone. And if you know anything about Wack 100, he's similar to like Charleston White. He's all about the drama. He's all about the aggression. He's all about the niggery behavior. So you just assumed that he was going to get on, on the phone and you find out who, why they're calling him. He was just going to crash out. Instead, Wack 100 actually like, no, nah, man, it's all good. I understand why that guy was annoyed at me. I get why he didn't like me. I get why he had a problem with me. But I've watched some of his content. I've heard from some people that he's a good person, blah, blah, blah. And he legitimately surprised the entire room. Like, whoa. And just completely deaded the beef to the point where, where they asked the guy, hey, what do you think of what Wack 100 said? And the guy in the studio was like, you know what? I have to be a real guy and just say the beef is squashed. How can I respond in aggression when he comes on the phone like this and is basically so like apologetic and is basically is extending the olive branch? I'd be an idiot to respond to that with aggression. And it was like, wow, what a surprise. But it made me think, you know what? That is actually how most, how most, how most those situations get dealt with. If you really want to move on, it actually does take one person to maybe put their pride and ego to one side and be like, you know what? Is this really that serious? Has blood been spilled? Have family members been disrespected and shit? No. Then it's, you know, it's workable. We can, we can get around this. We can get around this. And even if blood has been spilled, there is a way to get around it also. But it takes one person to be like, you know what? Let me be the grown up, or not grown up. Let me be the person that can put my ego to one side so that we can come to the middle. Because unfortunately, that whole phrase of meet up in the middle doesn't really exist in the real world. It takes one person to put their ego to a side and walk in the middle to get the other person to meet them in the middle. But you don't both go and meet each other in the middle. That's not how it works out. Especially nowadays. Everybody thinks they're fucking right. I'm a good example of it, right? I've got a fucking podcast. I'm always screaming. I'm always shouting. I'm very loud and wrong most of the times. And I think we're mostly like that. Where I think, I don't know if it's because of social media and we've all got our own acts and stuff, but we're all a lot more stubborn than we were maybe many years prior. So it's very difficult to get people to meet each other in the middle at the same time. You need one person to go to the middle and the other person will be like, you know what? I can't look like a fucking, you know, petty person. I can't look like an idiot. I can't look like I'm not mature. I'm going to then meet him in the middle and then you let bygones be bygones. And I think that's why I took from this Alison and Renera um, scene at the end of episode three. Like, it made me think, man, Jesus, man, most beefs, most falling outs can really be talked through. And when you don't talk through them and you let time pass in between without communication, it can sometimes build up. And sometimes it doesn't take people. It doesn't take people whispering in your ear. It just takes time. If you allow enough time without speaking to somebody and sorting things out, that gap in between, people can start making up their own conclusions about why you're not talking to them. They can start creating their own narratives, their own fantasies, you know, their own storylines, their own reasons why. And nowadays, considering how stubborn we all are, they're not going to let that go. They won't let that go. And when it comes to the point of you trying to reconcile, it'll be too far gone by then. So that's what it made me realize when I watched it. I was like, wow, man. Wow. Be careful how you approach relationships and, and situations and friendships because sometimes when stuff is too far gone, the consequences to it can be lethal. But I do love, I do love in the House of Dragon how there's always a consequence for each action. I think most actions in game in House of Dragon, even the incidents, in, even the crazy incident that happened with the baby, I think most of the actions in these series are very much justifiable in, in like, you know, in a silo. They're kind of justifiable. You can find reasons and grounds for everything that somebody does. But I love how everything they do or everything someone does has a reaction. You can't stop that from happening, no matter how justifiable. Because I think that's what happens to a lot of shows and why they're a bit naff. They're not rooted in realism because realism is like that. Reality is like that. Like you can go and, you know, uh, murder the abuser of somebody in your family. But the consequences are you doing that is good because you've, uh, you know, taken somebody off the earth that abused somebody in your family that hurt you and shit. But then the consequences are you're going to go to prison. That might actually lead to the breakdown of your family. You might destroy your future. You might destroy that family. You, don't, you, you know what I mean? There might, all these things are going to happen, but in, uh, in, in, in isolation, what you did was right, 
but you can't stop the ripple effects of your actions. And I love that in Game of Thrones, that's always at the core of what they do. And I love how they just follow through it anyway. They're all, most of them are very emotional, very um, quick to anger. They don't really have any restraint. And they always kind of go with their first instinct, which sometimes is the right thing, but it pans out to be the wrong thing and ends up hurting way more people. I absolutely love it. It's so amazing. I really do recommend you check out House of the Dragon Season 2. It's absolutely phenomenal.